Give me the name of a man that starts with the letter P. Patrick. Peter. Oh, one more. Phoebe. That's a woman's name. This is why none of you get to be in front of the camera. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Polo on Paper. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about two different ways that I've effectively been able to play categories in a nursing home while maintaining social distance. One of those games that my residents used to love prior to COVID was categories. Now, categories is a hard game to play as it is. I even tried to teach my family and trying to teach my brothers and sisters and cousins had me trying to pull my hair out. So, I always simplified it for the residents so that it became more of a trivia game. Then I had to take that altered game and alter it again so that we could play it while maintaining social distance or having the residents play in their room on their own. So today I'm going to show you guys two different ways that I've been able to do it. Now to play these games, you're not going to need all the supplies that come in the box. You are only going to need the 26-sided die, and if you choose, you can also use the cards that come with little categories. Now when you usually play categories, you choose a category, you roll the dice and get a letter, and then everyone has to name as many things, starting with that letter while staying within the category. Then you compare answers and whoever has the most unique answers wins. However, when it comes to playing in a nursing home, that became a little too hard for the residents. So what I did was, we would choose a category as a team, and then each person would take a turn rolling the dice, and whatever letter they got, they would have to name something from that category using that letter. However, with COVID, you don't want the residents to share supplies. So the person in charge, meaning you or your assistant, would be the one doing all the rolling. So you would basically just go down the line rolling for each person, and then they would call something from that category. Or you would just choose a letter at the beginning of the round and then have everybody name something starting with that letter, not necessarily falling into a certain category. I really like doing this in the hallway with the residents because there's always going to be residents who say they don't want to join. A lot of times they get frustrated because the other residents aren't giving all these obvious answers that are obvious to them. So then they'll start yelling them out. And then they'll come to the door and eventually they'll just start joining you and playing. And depending on the time of day that you're playing, if the CNAs aren't too busy, it's a great time for the CNAs to join in, help you, and if you run out of categories, because some of the categories that come pre-made on those cards are kind of hard for the residents, they're kind of hard for me, they can help you come up with different categories. This is a great way to help the residents stimulate their minds whilst being able to talk to each other. A lot of times a resident will have a hard time coming up with something and other residents try to help them come up with a specific word by either giving them hints or just saying the word out loud. I found that playing categories this way is really great in a memory care unit because a lot of times all I do is just yell out random letters and they'll start naming things. And you wanna make sure that you don't underestimate your residents. I have gotten some of the best and most hilarious answers from the memory care unit residents. The second way to play categories is in your room as independent leisure. Now this game isn't going to last as long and it's going to be a little bit more work for you as a director. So what I do is I type up a piece of paper like the one I'm gonna put on the screen, choose five or six different categories. Now within each category, I choose five or six different letters. Now you wanna make sure that you give them a mixture of easy letters and kind of hard letters to do. If you give them too many easy letters, they are going to finish the paper way too soon. And if you give them too many hard letters, they'll become frustrated and won't want to do it. But when you give them a mixture of easy and hard, they become more invested in the game because they've already got three of the five correct and they wanna make sure they get all five. It's also a great chance for them to call you back into their room and give you another chance to interact with them. One of the words that I gave my residents was to come up with a color starting with the letter D and they were all really stumped by it, except for one resident. All the other residents were on their call lights wanting me to go back in there because they wanted to know what color started with the letter D. Now obviously they could have done like dark red, dark blue, dark green, blah, 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 but they didn't want that. They wanted to come up with something a lot more specific. The only thing we came up with was denim, but it was great because we were laughing at the fact that two grown adults couldn't come up with anything for a color starting with the letter D. We had to Google it. So I've only been doing this categories on paper for about three, four weeks, and I'm going to make sure that I keep it going in those packets that I give them daily because they really are enjoying them and it's giving them a chance to not only 
exercise their mind, but exercise their hands because they're having to write something down. Both versions of the game come with their pros and cons. One of them requires that the resident be able to write or have someone who can help them to write, while the other one requires that the resident be able to vocalize what they're thinking. So you have to take those things into consideration when you are applying these games into your program. If you guys have any other ways that you place categories, make sure you leave them in the comments so that other people can see them and possibly work those things into the programs as well. If you like today's video, make sure that you like, comment, share, subscribe, and ring the bell. You can also follow me on Instagram on at Apolylook. There I post some of my upcoming projects and any other videos that I'll be posting on here. If you didn't like the video, then you should leave me a comment with an idea of a video that you would like, and then I'll do that, and maybe you'll like it. Okay, bye.